That's going on. Late night, early morning update. Um, once again, I want to thank everybody for sending the money. Um, it only takes a dollar. You know, I've been, I've been started campaigning to help uh, deliver the little project, get the South by Southwest, get the rolling loud. Now, I need to clear some things up about that because I'm up. My first off, my son had me up. <laughs> so I've been up researching, doing some more research on this uh, process. And for both uh, South by Southwest and Rolling Loud, um, their registration starts in June, right? So right now for both shows, they already have... Uh, they set the set list, I guess, of artists performing, uh, except uh, special ads and stuff like that. People add on later, you know, that might have been on tour and shit like that. That doesn't stop what um what we're doing. So this is how the industry work. Um, I've been around the industry. I've been studying this stuff for a long time years and years and years so how it works is what i'm doing to get us there right either we can put on a show a venue there around south by southwest around rolling loud go out uh gorilla market get people to come to our show go out, talk to our execs uh, stuff like that, but really, I don't really care about uh, Zex and stuff like that right now. I care about the people uh, and spreading the message that I've been spreading. <clears throat> Excuse me, stomach hurt. But, that, and that's what we're doing. So, this is a, a, a marketing run. So, by the time that spots do open up, we can be put in that position. Um, we are not chasing record labels, we are not chasing managers. We're not chasing the same things that a lot of these young artists are upcoming execs, upcoming people that work in the industry are chasing. We're not chasing uh, instant fame and stuff like that. We're chasing relationships. We're chasing uh, lifelong fans and followers of our own work um, by being independent. The work, the legwork that I'm doing is the same legwork that executives would do. Um, do I consider myself an executive? I absolutely do. I, maybe you don't know, I have, I, I went and got a uh, associates in business management. Then I went to a full cell for digital cinematography. I didn't finish full cell uh, because my funding ran out. And I didn't want to go back to school. Same as with Tyler Perry Studios. When I moved to Atlanta, it was to be on Tyler Perry Studios before Tyler Perry Studios even opened up big how it is now. Um, I was rejected by Tyler Perry Studios uh, because my funding ran out for school. So um, a lot of this stuff that is going on, people go to school for, but a lot of people don't. Um, some people have that drive some people have that determination some people have it already instilled in them uh the school and stuff is a paperwork that might look good if you don't have relationships so i'm building relationships no i don't do my business in the club like how a lot of the industry uh business is handled but you know usually when business is handled like that it's fuckery you know and you see this shit come out later on about people getting jerked and all this type of stuff. No, I'm reaching out to people. Maybe even the people that's in the industry that I'm reaching out to are people who want to see a change in the business, who want to see positivity shine through. And I'm not saying the music that is going now isn't uh, necessary because it is absolutely necessary. Uh, for people to start careers and uh, minorities and 
lower class people to get opportunities to build and create wealth. Um, I'm just not one that want to do it off the backs of, of other people. If you understand what I'm saying, and what I mean by that is, look at your look at your biggest artist that talks about drugs and all this type of stuff, right? Oh, I was a drug dealer. I was this. I was that. Yeah, a lot of us was, you know. But glorifying it to um, a business in a culture that markets to children, it doesn't add up for real. Um, so you'll get a, a few people that become millionaires, but then you get millions of people who are affected. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not one of them people who want to uh, justify doing wrong to get one right because in that justification you are negating all these people that you fucked over you get what i'm saying so we are going to build and start our own thing um that's what i say is is it's plenty of position we i will have the same type of position that you see in the industry but some of these uh some of these ways that the and tactics that these people are using are will not be using those ways and those tactics. You get what I'm saying? I will not uh like say we pick up a female artist. I don't feel a female has to go get a fake ass to make it. In the culture that we in now, you look at every female artist that comes out, what do they do? They go get the bad bitch kit. And some people look good with it, but at the same time, yeah, this one person might look good, but then look at the trajectory and the downfall after. Look how many young girls go and get uh, fake butts because they favor female rappers who said they was a stripper at one time or they was a scamming at one time, and the men like fake butts. And then look at all these women in your city that went and got the fake butts. Y'all can continue to say that the music and uh, movies don't play a part and what's going on is is how you raise man that's bullshit it's bullshit because as your parents are raising you they're also being pushed uh and distracted by all these type of things that's being thrown on their face so it's a lot to think it's a lot to unpack it's a lot of update i'm going to do it's a lot of explaining i'm going to have to do because i want y'all to really get this i want y'all to really understand what's going on i want you to understand what your children are seeing understand what you are seeing and recognize uh these things that are being used against you uh think about the 90s so big and tupac get killed right who saves the day who saves the day for hip-hop i wonder uh, i'm gonna say it but i wonder if people really understand that how Puff Daddy saved the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, in the 90s, when everybody was gangsters and real gangbangers and, and, and these things, it was making so much money that it became a template. When Big and Puff died, I mean, when Big and Pop that it was like that was almost taboo, right? Diddy Kane, shiny suits, you know, a flashy lifestyle, you know, making people want to be like them, you know. Now everybody's chasing the bag. Everybody's chasing the bag. And you look to the next generation, they talk, start talking about drug use. It went from drug dealers to the party and to drug use. Because at the party, what happened? The drug use so it's all a play it's all a play it's been a play um it's just up to you to create balance and like i said it made millionaires uh it made the the culture grow but at the detriment of you so i just want to give another update you know and make sure y'all understand that this is not going to be a quick process and the money that is coming in will steady go to everything to help us get to that point 
I want to do something positive for my people before I, it's my time. You know, because we all got a date. And uh, I believe the more you good you put in this world, you know, the better your name can live. The better you can age gracefully. You can go out without all these accusations of shit that you done when you were stepping on people to get there. So I'll update y'all again. Uh, this also be on my YouTube. Okay.